And we're live on the spot with Jenny Munch. Jenny, tell us about yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Jenny Munch, uh, and uh, I write, and I also do the videos. You probably see me around town taking the videos. Uh, we have the Flint Underground channel. What kind of channel. videos do you take? Uh, well, you know, I really, ever, I really concentrate on uh, local musicians and artists. So there are always, there usually always a Flint video or something related to Flint. Maybe we're, you know, if we did a show that was outside of town, maybe I'd videotape that or something. And when I say um, artists, I'm talking about musicians as well as visual artists and writers. I mean, we put everything together. And, um, that's that's really what I'm talking about. So you like to document those kinds of artists. Do you document them in any other ways? Yeah, in other ways I do. I write a, a couple books about Flint. Flint Project books. Flint Project. Flint, Flint artists. So yep. like portraits of Flint artists. Yep. And then now I also paint portraits of Flint artists. And really they're just like, you know, friends and people that I know from around that I just, uh, I don't know, I just want to capture the, the person at that moment. And in the videos I like to document things. That's really what it's about. I like to use my camera like a telescope so I can kind of zoom in on that that musician's face when they're singing or their hands when they're playing or whatever is going on. I mean, well, well, let's zoom in on your next big project here, okay. the Urban Art Fair. Tell yes. us about that. That is the Flip Famous Urban Art Fair. Um, and that's going to be visual arts as well as spoken word. And it's going to be at the Loft on May 13th from 6 to 11. And that is during Art Walk, so you could uh, you could also go to some other venues while you're there too, you know, in between. But um, I'd say about 8.30, make sure you're there because we're going to do some spectacular things when it gets to be sundown. Um, but the artists involved, we're going to have Polly, and uh, for visual artists, and uh, Dan Doolin, and uh, Willie McCray, and Kenny Little, and, uh, am I forgetting, oh, Jay, Jay Rowland uh, and Ariel might have some things in there, some photography, and then also um, Justin Faber. And then as far as spoken word, we got Nick Custer, and he's going to have his book available for sale. And then we're going to have Alex Alexander Markov, and he's going to have his brand new book for sale there. So that will be like a, um, his, uh, well actually, uh, Nick, is that your first book that you've got? No, because you've done chat books, but... That was the first bound book. But anyway, we'll have all of the books there available. Um, I don't know if there's any other, is there any other person I'm forgetting about spoken word? Oh, uh, Na Nadia, Nadia Alama, and she has a new book, so she's going to be there. And... Are you going to have live music? You know what, we're probably going to have a DJ there, and we're going to have the spoken word people kind of uh, stand up uh, in the uh, in the venue uh, periodically and, and read some of their stuff so that you know what's in their book and then when after you go after you look at the art and you listen to the poets you exit the gift shop and in the gift shop we're going to have all the books and we're also going to have copies inexpensive copies of the paintings so uh, you know a lot of people I know especially in Flint we're in kind of a depressed area and it's difficult for an artist to get uh, the, the prescriptions. Money, the, the money, well, the money that they... <laughs> the antidepressants. <laughs> the prescriptions for antidepressants. I don't think that's a problem. Um, but the, it's hard for an artist to get what the painting is worth. Because a lot of times, you know, people don't realize all that goes into it. Not only the physical cost of the paints and the canvases and all of that, but then there's also the time. You know, you take a lot of time. And so, and you know, so that's why I wanted to have inexpensive copies also available of all the paintings in the gift shop. So you prefer that artists don't starve locally. Yeah, it'd be nice. So why are you doing this show in a non-traditional venue like The Loft? Oh. Is that part of your urban art fair attack on uh, traditional gallery values? Well, it's, um, yeah, to be, I, you know, we've got it, we have enough art shows with people with wine glasses and they have the fancy openings and... They don't serve wine at the loft? Well, yeah, they do. They probably got some wine and some beer and some other stuff there. Um, but I wanted it to be a very relaxed uh, uh, place. I don't want, to, and I wanted, well, like I said, for everyone to be there, not just people who have enough money to buy an original painting. 
but other people as well. I want everybody to be able to go and, and have a good time and, uh, and be able to have the art. And also there's going to be a little bit of a show going on too, about 8.30 when the sun goes down. So make sure you're there. What kind of show? Well, I want it to be a surprise. Um, I so hate surprises. You, <laughs> well, you're just going to have to go. And uh, then, of course, everything will probably be videotaped. So you'll see it afterwards. Who's going to videotape? Are you going to videotape? What? This is a problem. We're, do you have we're, a street team? We're, we're, we're talking about that. I'm in the process of finding people to do that. Okay. So it's a very interesting concept for a show. What is your war against? Our war? Oh, urban instead of warfare, art fair. We want to... Um, replace the the negative Mad Max image with a, one of uh, urban art instead of, uh, you know, so violence. So you, you want to, uh, I like that, subvert the, the violence with art. Yes. Erase it, cover We're it up. We're replacing the war with art. That's a great concept. Yes. So you said you're a, a very multifaceted artist. Tell me a little bit more about some of the paintings that you'll have or some of the stuff you've done in the past. Okay, well as far as um, my art that I'm painting, and I am painting art specifically for this art show and sort of some of the other artists, but um, I didn't want to show that until the art shows will be a surprise. But I do, uh, but I can show you some of my other paintings like my Blue Sky uh, series especially um, because I have several of those paintings around town. Um, there are some at the uh, Good Beans Cafe, usually in their ante room. Also, uh, you know, I forget about this, but I do some cityscapes, and there are some uh, two foot by two foot cityscapes in different places. Like if you go to the Good Beans, they have one of their of Good Beans. Um, there's one over at the Lunch Studio, Hoffman's Deli. Um, there's there's several of those around town. You might notice. Uh, but anyway, uh, but it uh, some of the the Flint famous people that I painted though. Um, at Good Beans include uh, Polly, and Polly's going to be in the art show, uh, but I do have a painting of Polly, maybe if anybody has seen that around town, we did that a few years ago, uh, and then I have one of Nick Custer, who's going to have his book at the show, and this was some fun thing that we did with a tie, you can call it the hanged man, or you can turn it the other way, and and the pulled man, I don't know, he's still being hung. Um, anyway, so that one was with Nick Custer. And then I did Terry Kinsey, um, the, um, Anticipating the Opera. And that's what I call this one. And this one is also at, at Good Beans, usually. What opera did he go to see? I don't know if it's a pretend opera. I don't know if he's ever seen an opera. I know, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, it was just a fun thing that we did. And uh, so I also... For the art show, though, I am going to, again, paint Flint Famous, but this time I decided to paint uh, uh, musicians. So I'm going to paint a series of six different musicians, and so a lot of you are probably going to see people you know on the wall. They're six foot by two foot, so they're like life size. Um, and uh, out of the musicians, I'll, I'll just tell you who I painted. And uh, I painted uh, Scott Gus Green with his handmade guitar. Uh, and and he's the one that won the Flint Song Contest. You've probably seen him uh, in different venues around town. Uh, another person that, that's around a lot is saxophone player Andre Linden. And then I also painted uh, Holly with her accordion. I painted, um, I painted um, Holly with her accordion, uh, Desmond Shepard with a violin. Uh, Ashley Klein with a mandolin, and then my last painting is uh, Carrie. I don't know what his last name is. He's with the Larry, Larry McRae band, and he plays the bass. And he also was uh, playing at Golden Leaf. If you've been there, you've seen him play there. He now plays at Churchill. So. Awesome. So um, those are the paintings I'm doing, and um, the paintings, each one, I really there's three different areas that I'm I'm going to focus on. First off, all of them are in a Flint like a Flint alley or someplace in the city of Flint, the background. And then the other thing is, of course, the instrument, and then uh, the person. And I try to capture capture them so that you'll see them and you'll know who they are. Cool. Anything you want people to know before they head out to the show? Just that it should be a lot of fun. I hope there's a lot of people there. Cool. Um, and if there's not, if just we show up, that will be fun too. Drinks on Jenny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm cutting that part out. <laughs>